Welcome to Hartman Math. Today we're going to take a look at rational functions. Uh, before we get to that, a little bit of review on finding zeros of functions. In this case, given a complex zero as a clue to get us started. Go ahead and pause the video here. We're going to find all the zeros of f of x. Keep in mind, as a fifth degree function, it's probably going to have five zeros. Uh, now, there might be repeats. We may not list, need to list them all, but there are going to be five zeros. All right, good way to get this started is to turn this into a factor. And since negative 1 plus i is a zero, negative 1 minus i also a zero because of the conjugate pair. So that turns into a factor. If we distribute the minus and then regroup, we're going to get x, uh, x plus 1 minus i, x plus 1 plus i. Multiply those two expressions together. That's where we're getting x squared plus 2x plus 2. That's a factor. It then divides into our polynomial. Should do, do so evenly. And then you might be able to recognize a pattern here. And this does factor by grouping, factoring out an x squared, factoring out a minus 5. There's now a common factor of x plus 2, leftover factors of x squared minus 5. So all of the zeros are negative 2, set that equal to 0, plus or minus root 5. And then our original negative 1 plus i and its conjugate pair, negative 1 minus i, one, two, three, four, five, zeros. All right. Rational functions. A rational function is a quotient of a polynomial function divided by another polynomial function. So we have our numerator polynomial function here, our denominator polynomial function there. And that's uh, going to be a rational function as long as d of x cannot be zero. We can't divide by zero. So that's got to be something besides zero. Uh, so a good time to be using graph paper or uh, graphs that have been provided. And we're not going to want to be changing scale on this. So everything's by one unit. All right. So as we were looking at our rational function f of x, numerator, polynomial, denominator, polynomial, so list it out in our standard usual form. Uh, and then over here, maybe some different coefficients, different uh, exponents. So b of m is for leading coefficient times x to the power of m, and so on. Right now, we're going to assume that our numerator function and denominator function have no common factors. So were you to factor them out, you wouldn't see any factors that could cancel at this point. We might take a look at what that looks like later. So some important things to know about it. Uh, a rational function is going to have vertical asymptotes if the denominator function has any zeros. So if it does, that's where vertical asymptotes will take place. The zeros of the denominator. Since we're not allowed to divide by zero, that's going to create places where there are gaps in the domain, where we can't have x values there. Now, in terms of horizontal asymptotes, the graph of f has at most one horizontal asymptote, and it is determined by comparing the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. Most of the time, you're probably going to find out that the degree of the numerator is smaller or less than the degree of the denominator, and in which case we have a horizontal asymptote, y equals 0, also known as the x-axis. If those two degrees are the same, like this was x to the fifth, and this one was x to the fifth, then it is going to have a horizontal asymptote, but it will not be at y equals 0. It will be at y equals leading coefficient divided by leading coefficient. So if this was 3x to the fifth, and this was 1x to the fifth, we'd say 3 divided by 1, we'd say our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 3. And then later we're going to look at what happens when 
the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator, it's not going to have a horizontal asymptote. Something else happens instead. Right, example number one, here's our function f of x equals x minus 2 divided by x minus 4. We're going to graph it. We're going to find all the intercepts and the asymptotes. So let's start out by finding a y-intercept. What should we substitute for x to find the y-intercept? We should substitute 0. So we would get negative 2 divided by negative 4. We've got a y-intercept at 0, comma, a half. So we're going to plot that point. X-intercepts. X-intercepts come from the numerator. Set the numerator equal to 0 and solve. x minus 2 equals 0. Oh, that tells us that there's going to be a 0 of the function at 2 and therefore an x-intercept at 2 comma 0. Got a point there. So look at horizontal asymptotes. We're going to compare the degrees of numerator and denominator. Invisible exponent of 1 invisible exponent of 1. So the degrees are the same, so it's going to have a horizontal asymptote at leading coefficient divided by leading coefficient. 1 divided by 1 is 1. Horizontal asymptote y equals 1. Notice that I'm putting a dotted line to say it's not really part of my graph, it's just helping it out. And lastly, vertical asymptotes come from the denominator. Set the denominator equal to 0, solve for x, x equals 4, and that is the vertical asymptote. It's not a point, it is a vertical line. x equals 4. So now we just got to fill in the rest of our graph. So this part's pretty easy. We can see that, and remember, asymptotes are meant to, as we go out away from the center, that we're going to approach, not necessarily touch, but just approach those and getting closer and closer to those lines. So over here, as we trend this way, we're going to get close to our asymptote. And as it bends down, we're going to get close to our asymptote. Now, something has to be happening to the right of this vertical asymptote, because that's the only place where uh, the only x value that is not in the domain. So we've got to have some stuff going on over here. Not sure if it's here or here. Let's see if we can figure it out. Well, one way is to pick an x value out here, plug it in, and get us a point. Like we said, OK, what about 5? Can I plug in a 5? 5 minus 2 divided by 5 minus 4. Well, that's 3. So we should have a point at 5 comma 3. And that tells us that if we're going to pass through and curve through that point and get close to this and get close to this, have to look something like that. And there's number one. All right, example number two, we're going to look at a little bit of extra information here. Uh, if we're talking about the denominator, if we're looking at finding the zeros, and we generally do that by factoring, uh, if we look at a factor, its degree or multiplicity of that factor, if it is odd, then the behavior about that asymptote is opposite. However, if it's even, then the behavior is the same. We'll take a look at what that means in terms of the graph. So example number two, graph G and find all of the intercepts and asymptotes. Let's start by factoring our denominator, because that's going to be useful in uh, several different ways, but definitely in trying to find our vertical asymptotes. So we factor our denominator. Now let's go after the y-intercept, plug in a 0 for x, and we get 0. So not only is the y-intercept 0, uh, comma 0, but x-intercept also 0, comma 0. And in terms of our numerator, this leading to that x-intercept, since this is a power of 1, then our behavior at that x-intercept is passing through the uh, x-axis at that point, not bouncing off, but passing through. 
So we'll put a point there. All right, horizontal asymptotes, we have to compare degree of the numerator to degree of the denominator. This one is less than that one. So y equals zero is our horizontal asymptote. Vertical asymptotes come from the denominator. Set it equal to zero and solve. So x equals negative one, x equals positive two. All right, so we've got some information here. I think we're gonna need more. And since we already have a point that's between our two asymptotes, that's probably a good place to go for more information. Let's get another point. Let's maybe plug in a one and see what we get and plot that point. So if we go g of 1, g of 1, be negative a half, so we have a point there. So remember, now we can at least draw the middle section of our graph. We've got to go through this point. When we hit this x-intercept, because of the odd degree here, we're going to pass through. Where if this had been x squared, I would be bouncing there. But it's a through, so I'm going to have to start down here, get close to my asymptote, pass through this x-intercept, and then get close to that asymptote. Now what's going on over here and what's going on over here, this part can help us with that. So if we look at maybe this uh, asymptote right there, it came from x minus 2 to the first power. Since that's odd, the behavior is opposite. So notice on the left side of the asymptote, our function approached it on the low side, low. We want to be opposite on the other side. We want to be high. And here's our horizontal asymptote that we're getting close to. So it's going to come down and get close to our horizontal asymptote. Now over on this one, this asymptote came from here. It also has an odd exponent. If it had been even, we'd say the behavior is the same, so high here, we'd be high on the other side if it was even. But this one's also odd, so we need to go opposite. We're high over here. On the other side, we need to be low. And bend and get close to our horizontal asymptote. Now you might early on have been, whoa, whoa, wait a second, been told that we're not supposed to cross an asymptote. Well, that's a lie. You can cross asymptotes, particularly horizontal asymptotes, because asymptotes are really shaping the graph as we get way out away from the center towards negative infinity, towards positive infinity. So in this case, yes, you can cross a horizontal asymptote still can't cross a vertical asymptote. That's going to be our graph. There we go. Example three. Graph f of x. Find all intercepts and asymptotes. Go ahead and find the y-intercept. Plug in a zero, f of zero. It's gonna be two-thirds, so we can plot that. X-intercept, look at the numerator. What's the x-intercept? Two comma zero. It is, if we had parentheses, it would be to the first power, so that's going to be a pass-through x-intercept. Horizontal asymptote, what would that be? Well, if we were going to multiply this out, it's kind of nice it's already factored, but if we were going to multiply this out, we'd have x squared times x, we'd have x to the third on the bottom. So clearly the degree on top is smaller than the degree on the bottom, and that forces a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis at y equals zero. Right. 
what are the what is the vertical asymptote or what are the vertical asymptotes x equals negative 1 x equals 3 draw those in this time we have a little bit more information we got enough to get our middle piece going have to pass through here this is a not a bounce off but a pass through so Approach the asymptote and approach the asymptote. Now, what's going on over here? Well, let's take a look. This asymptote came from here. Its exponent is even, so behavior is the same. So if we're high on this side, on the other side, we need to be also high, the same. And over here, on the right side, as there's two vertical asymptotes, there's going to be one more than that parts to the graph. One, two, three parts, because we have two vertical asymptotes. So over here, here's our vertical asymptote, x equals 3. It's got an exponent of 1 that's odd, so our behavior is opposite. So if we're low on the left side, we need to be high on the right side. Checkpoint, graph h, h of x. Pause the video here. See if you can come up with the y-intercept, the x-intercept, the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. All the pieces to the graph using the end behavior, the behavior about the asymptotes. See if you can graph it out. Here's the information, y-intercept, x-intercept, horizontal, and verticals. Plugging in zero. Here we go. Could have put bounce on that one, because notice when we got uh, the two comma zero, the exponent for that factor is even. And that means we're going to bounce. It did not come from the denominator. So we're not talking about uh, vertical asymptotes. We're talking about a point, the x-intercept. Uh, so because it's even, we're going to bounce it 2 comma 0. Uh, horizontal, because it's second degree on top and third degree on the bottom. x equals negative 1, x equals 3. So we had a point. Another one, this one's a bounce. So we came down here and we bounced off of that point and came back up. Over here, the exponent is odd. So we were high on the left. We got to be low on the right. And over at x equals 3, that's an even multiplicity or exponent. So since we were high on the right, even means same. We've got to also be high on the left of that asymptote. And then as we go to the left and to the right, we've got to get close to our horizontal. That's where the horizontal asymptote comes into play, out here and out here. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.